this afternoon, this evening. Um, I'm delighted to see we've got such a, a wide turnout and um, full of enthusiastic wayfinders, I'm sure. So, I'm not sure I want to pair with whatever this is asking me to pair with. I can leave that for later. Thank you very much, Fiona and Antonio. I'll now, I'm, I'm just going to take you through the, 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 the background to the project, some of the things that we did in order to come up with the strategy that's being presented today. And I'll provide you with a summary overview of that strategy to give you the key concepts behind the wayfinding that we, proposals that we've developed. And those wayfinding proposals are very much multimedia, both with traditional signing um, structures, printed information, new media information, but also more broadly looking at how the public realm and public spaces are designed to make it easier for people to move around our public spaces because a lot of the difficulties that we have navigating are compounded by clutter and additional structures that are legacy and have been left over a number of years and poorly maintained. So the wayfinding strategy not only addresses things like the the examples of signs that we have here today, but uh, much more broadly considers how those signs function within public spaces and how we can use digital media to enhance um, those more traditional means of signing through mobile applications um, and so forth. <clears throat> the first slide just presents a simple overview of, uh, of, of today's agenda. Um, pretty much as I've just described, wayfinding context the inputs that we had to the strategy, the strategy itself, the core themes and principles that will underpin the development of this project moving forward, the components of the system, so what, will you, what you'll see, what you'll interact with on street, um, and uh, finally a session for feedback and comments. The first slide takes us through the four key stages that the project's been involved in. Stage one, shows a, a, a circle with information gathering that we undertook between October and November uh, 2011. The information gathering was fairly broad, and I'll go into more detail in the subsequent slides. Engage stakeholder engagement, it involved stakeholder engagement, it involved going out on the street and um, immersing ourselves in Toronto and in Toronto's places. The project team is a mixture of local consultants and international consultants and we were sharing our knowledge and understanding of fresh eyes on a, on a, on a new city and experienced eyes and, and bodies who know the city very well. We also looked at international best practices and we engaged broadly with stakeholder groups, some of which are here today. The outcomes of those activities translated into a main wayfinding methodology that we tested at a um, a workshop in December with around 40 or 50 people present and that workshop was fundamental to inform the development of our thinking in terms of how the strategy would go forward. The third phase has been the development of concept designs as you um, will see later on around the room and in this presentation. And the current activity <coughs> is one a completion of that concept development and two development of a business case that expresses the cost, the projected cost of the system based on international precedents um, and best practice and the benefits to Toronto, the economic benefits, the environmental benefits and the social benefits of the implementation of such a scheme across the city. So why, why would we do wayfinding and signing? This slide shows a couple of key bullet points that indicate some of the reasons why you might want to, to provide a wayfinding system. Toronto is a, is a city of neighbourhoods, it's a city of lots of places and it's actually quite easy when you're in many of these places, Chinatowns, Lawrence Market, the Silvia District, to know where you are. It's not quite so easy however to know how to get from those places somewhere else. So wayfinding can help not only to identify where you are, but it can help to connect where you are with somewhere else and encourage people to, to move. So for example, you might drive to the distillery district at the weekend in your car, but you might then get back in your car and drive to St. Lawrence Market, or you might drive from there down to the entertainment district. 
rather than encouraging people to make these short journeys, what we're trying to do is to help join these places together, both mentally and physically, through wayfinding um, products and information. In turn, that will help build people's confidence so that when they come to the city, they're encouraged and helped to walk. You park in the car park, you know how to get from the car park to your destination, you might walk a little bit further. Research demonstrates that people are confident to walk roughly five to ten minutes from their the place they're familiar with. Wayfinding helps people to walk much further and it broadens their horizons and encourages them to explore. It can also help reduce people's reliance on transportation, cars, public transport. It can get them to public transport more easily, but it can get them from public transport to other places. And for example, you might find in downtown Toronto that a lot of people get on at Patrick Station and take the loop all the way down and round and up where they could actually walk to, Dun um, to Dundas, possibly more quickly, um, and save that congestion on the, on the, on the, on the subway network. Sorry, this, I, I tried to switch off my screensaver, but he was determined to go to sleep every so often. Maybe he's got some jet lag. Um, but but this, all, all of these can combine to provide economic stimulus to a city. If you encourage people to walk more, and people are more confident to explore, um, they're more confident to spend money and spend time. So people are walking around neighbourhoods with uh, Queen Street West, for example, and they're happy to explore off the main drag. They might find Kensington Market, and then they might find um, other things they want to do. And they'll be confident to find their way from there back to where they're going or where they've come from. And that helps them. That confidence helps, helps, confidence helps them to know how long they'll get somewhere and how much time they can spend where they are. And therefore they'll be more relaxed to enjoy a cafe, or a bar, or a restaurant, or to spend time in a shop lingering, looking at clothes, or whatever. It also, it also makes the city feel more welcoming for tourists and strangers and visitors. And they might want to extend their stay, um, or they might stay for a couple of extra days or a couple of extra hours. All of that draws an additional economy into the, into the system. And finally, it also makes um, journeys quicker, because people know where they're going. And so if you, if you know where you're going, you'll get there more quickly. And those time savings have a direct economic impact and a real benefit to the city and to business and to the individual. And finally, what it does is reassure people and encourage them to, them to explore. What it really does is it tells people you can get lost, but when you're lost, you'll be able to find your way back to where you want to get to, rather than get lost and then not really knowing where they are. What, what does wayfinding mean? Well, as I've suggested already, it's much more than just signs. Signs are one part of a wayfinding system. Wayfinding is very, very broad in its concept. It includes quite challenging things that you might think are straightforward, like names. What do you call places? Names evolve over time. You've got, in some of the maps you'll see of Toronto, you've got a lot of the business improvement areas highlighted, so people are familiar with those names. But then there's gaps in between. What are those places called? What's it called if you go from, from um, Chinatown down to the waterfront? Okay, you might go through the, the, the entertainment district, but there's gaps in, in these maps, and there's gaps in people's mental maps of the city because they don't know whether there's anything of value in these places in between the places that are promoted and um, publicised. So agreeing the names of the things that are contained in the information is fundamental. Because one part of the strategy is to use this information on other media. And to do so, we need to use the same names, regardless of whether it's on a highway sign, or whether it's on a pedestrian sign, or a map, or a website. It also includes lighting, making places more legible by getting rid of clutter and opening up sight lines so you can see your destination. It includes things like um, improving public ground with tactile, tactile paving so that people know when they're coming up, people with visual impairments know when they're coming up to something that might be dangerous for them. It also includes creating places that are memorable, and that could be through public art, um, it could be through architecture, um, and it also includes, as I've mentioned already, new technologies. So, what, what do we get into this, into this strategy? The first phase was, was threefold. We had um, observation. There's three on the, on the slide I've just shown. There are three different bubbles. One is observation, there's a consultation bubble, and a research bubble. These are the three things that we undertook in the first phase. And the observation was of Toronto, 
looking at generally how people behave and navigate, looking at specific areas of the city, um, looking at um, design guidelines, looking at streetscape. We consulted widely with many of the key stakeholders in the city that are involved in developing wayfinding or in implementing or in managing wayfinding. We had workshops and we've now got the open house. And the research was looking into um, Toronto's policy. What's driving this project? Uh, a walking strategy published in 2010 is a fundamental driver of a lot of the work that we're doing today, but there's also broader support across the business communities to um, implement something that makes Toronto more accessible, um, more welcoming, uh, and easier to use. And we also saw a look at international best practice, international experiences, which has contributed to the, the, the strategy. So, what do we see? Toronto has got a lot of strengths. Um, it's one of the few cities um, that you'll find that has almost a, a north-south grid in the downtown area. Because of the waterfront, Toronto has actually got, a, it's, it's very fortunate in that as a gridded city, it's north-south, which makes navigation, to some extent, relatively easy. Um, there's also many landmarks, like Thompson Hall, we've got the CN Tower, which is about how, how, how much better a wayfinding landmark could you ask for than the CN Tower that you can see from almost anywhere. Uh, well, I think I was coming back from Scarborough once and I could see it on the road driving into town from however many, 15, 15 20 miles, 15, 20 kilometers. It's also got very distinctive neighbourhoods. I mentioned the neighbourhoods, but those neighbourhoods form the city, and they do have very strong identities. What we're not suggesting here is that we lose those identities, but that we build on these characteristics that are already in place. And we also use the landmarks, um, the, the uh, art galleries, the museums, the uh, other important architectural buildings that we have across the city. But there are issues, and those issues are to do with the continuity um, of the information that's currently available, the consistency of that information, how well connected the various systems are, and how accessible the systems are. So continuity, the slide shows um, an image of a map, but really what it's saying is that continuity, um, currently in Toronto is very fragmented. You've got a multitude of different systems that don't join up, they use different names, they use different terminology, they're very interested in where they are themselves, but they're not that interested in where you might want to get to. And so they're not really helping you go anywhere, they're helping you stay where you are. Um, consistency, both in material, product, location. If, if you're trying to anticipate as a visitor to the city where the next sign is to get you from A to B, there's, there's no consistency to help that. So you might find a, a small, a, a localized wayfinding system that you think is very helpful, and then you walk a couple of hundred, couple of hundred yards expecting to find something else that continues from that point of origin to your destination, and there's nothing. And all of a sudden you find yourself in some backwater that you didn't expect to get into, or whatever. Um, and you don't quite know how to get from there to where.